Hello, welcome to uh, Fast Physics. Welcome back. Uh, we're going to be looking at A-level, uh, magnetic fields, and mostly the left-hand rule that we use when we look at motors. Now, um, any keen eye people might have already spotted, I've scribbled all over my hands here. Um, and that's to help us identify which of the fingers we use to follow the rules. Now, um, I remember it as thumb for movement, and that's a direction that due to a force caused by the field, a wire or a coil will try and act. Um, B, your magnetic field. So first finger is your field, and remember it always goes from north to south. Second finger is your current. I remember that always goes from positive to negative. So we take this kind of stance with our hand, okay? And each finger should be at 90 degrees to the other. So like this. Now um, we use this hand and we use this rule mostly when we're looking at motors. Um, but you know, when we're looking at a piece of paper and we've got a question on it, we need to know in which plane we are acting. So one main way we do that is we consider it acting like an arrow so here is me let's imagine i'm stood staring at an arrow that is flying through the air now if this was me i would see the point of the arrow the arrowhead now thinking about that if the field was traveling in this direction like the arrow at me i would see the arrow head so it looked like a dot flying towards me um, probably telling me of my impending doom, but this dot flying towards me, that tells me my field is coming out of the page. This is a direction of the field. So this is the direction of the arrow. This is the direction of the field, like it's coming at me. Now, if I was stood over here, however, I would see like the crosshairs of the arrow, like flying away from me like this. So if I'm looking at the field going away from me, then it would look like it's going into the page here. So we look at the cross as in the field is going down into the page and we put a dot as if the field is coming up out of the page. Now, sometimes the um, cross is circled, it means the exact same thing. So don't let that throw you off and don't let that confuse you in your exam. It's the same thing as just drawing the normal cross, which is the field is going into the page. Well, here we're saying the field or the magnetic flux density is coming out of the page. Now, this is a common problem people tend to find themselves in, in which case we have a wire with a current. And we have two magnets, but we don't know which direction the field is going in. So our field is currently unknown. So we can work out our force depending on the scenario. So I'm not going to scribble on this too much. I'll do it in pencil so I can rub out and we can give you guys a go at lots and lots of different scenarios. So here is two magnets with a wire going between them like this. Okay. So if I was to say that, you know, connected to my power supply here, that that was a positive and negative terminal. So there's a negative, here's the positive, then that would mean my current is going this way round, this way, okay? So my current is going in that direction. So first, uh, so your, your thumb is your force, first finger is field, second finger is your current. So I know currently it's either going to be like that or it's going to be like that, okay? So when you're doing this, you're going to need two of these factors. Now, let's imagine I was to say that I knew that this magnet was north and this magnet was south. So our field always goes from north to south, okay? So now I have two factors. Brilliant, I can work out the question. So I know my first finger is my field, so it's going to be going that way. Second finger is my current. Now, I know my current's going this way into the page so i'd have to do that so my field is still going from north to south but now my current's going into the page like i just said which means my force is going to be going down so my wire would currently experience a force in this direction so we can use this scenario to find out 
which direction our wire is going to try and have some movement due to the force that is caused by being exposed to a different magnetic field. Okay, now here is the same picture, but I'm going to give it a different scenario completely. So I'm going to say that my current now, this is the positive end and this is the negative end. Now this is going to completely change what's going to happen. So if that's the current to switch directions, let's mess it up even more. I'm now going to also say that this is the North Pole and oh look, that's the South Pole. So I've completely disorientated the whole thing. I've turned everything the opposite way. So looking at our FBI again, so my field is going this way, okay? So my field is going from north to south, so it's going this way. My current is now coming out of the page or going from positive to negative. So my current is going to be going this way. So my field's going this way, my current's going this way. Well, look, my force is still going in a downward direction. Now, this is really hard to show on camera, but it's going in a downward direction. So if you switch more than one component, it is going to make the same outcome. Now, if I imagine that instead of switching my poles, I kept that one as north and that one as south, like in the first example, first finger field, north to south, second finger is my current and it's coming from positive to negative, so it's coming outwards, okay? Well, look, now my force is going upwards. So it does have an impact which way round you do it. So just make sure when you're using the left hand rule, you know which finger is which and what they mean because the outcome will matter depending on how you do it. So I've discussed using the left hand rule, but it's really important for you to be able to now use the equation appropriately. So this is the equation you are going to be needing to know pretty much off by heart, back to front, inside out, because you will be using this till you're saying it in your sleep, basically. Now, force, no stranger to you. Everybody should have been doing force since they're in about year eight. So force is measured in newtons, okay? And it is uh, how an object can be forced to move. So you know that F equals MA, for instance, so you, you've come across force before, it's just this is now we're applying it to a different scenario in terms of a magnetic field. So force is measured in newtons. Magnetic field and magnetic flux density, we've already spoken about this in a previous video. If you've not seen it, make sure you go and have a quick look. But that is measured in Tesla's or Weber's per meter squared. So that's one way of finding your magnetic flux density. I is your current measured in amps. Again, you should know this from GCSE. And L is the length of wire in the field. Now this L is measured in meters. So you now know what each symbol represents and what they are measured in. Now I'm going, I'm going to try and keep it color coordinated the whole way through. So F will stay purple, um, B will be green, I will be red, and L will try and be a, like a brownie orange color for you guys. Oh dear, I know you're all probably reading this and think, duh, 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 require practicals. I know they aren't everyone's favourite thing and I know half the time they are a bit of a struggle to get going. However, I'm going to try and explain to you how we can use the FBI scenario in order to carry out this required practical. So you're going to be needing this equation, so it might be handy to have it in front of you. Now, required practical 10 is where you have a top pan balance with a pair of magnets and a cradle sat with a wire going between them. So this is a side view, as if I've just chopped it in half. Um, and then here is an above view. So from looking above your practical, you have your two magnets sat either side and your wire going between it. A little bit like what I drew here, okay? But it's sat on a top hand balance. Now, this is so we can measure the downward force that is being created when we're doing this practical. So if we're looking at a circuit diagram, you're gonna have your wire, your copper wire going in the middle, your two magnets going either side. It will be connected to a switch, power supply and ammeter, and then normally a variable resistor of sorts, but sometimes we don't put those in, okay? Now, when we're doing this, what you are ideally trying to prove 
is that if you increase the current or if you um, increase the length of wire in the field, then that is going to have an effect on your force. Now, if you look at this, if you make this number go up, then this number's gonna go up because they're directly proportional. So if you increase the current, your force should increase. If you increase the length, your force should increase. So provided that you keep your magnets the same, so you've got the same magnetic field, keeping the same distance apart, Therefore, you should have a uniform magnetic field. You'll be able to prove that current and length of wire are proportional to your force, okay? So, looking at this, um, what it, we tend to find, and this is something that people tend to find really bizarre, people get freaked out about it, um, we clamp the, the wire in place. The wire can't move, which means the wire can't be going up and down. It can't show that force in any way so the only way it can do that is by um, exerting a force on this top pan balance through the field um so often with the top pan balance what you'll find is either the numbers go negative so the balance has become lighter less is on top of it or it'll become positive so it looks like something's pushing down on it despite the fact nothing's touched the top pan balance now when you think about it like this force of the wire is BIL and force shown on a top hand balance is mass times gravity. Now these are basics, you, you, you know this. Um, however, if we have a magnetic field, it tries to oppose or do the opposite to the force caused by the top hand balance. So what the top hand, top hand balance is showing us. So thinking about this, you have got these two equations that equate four. So I can put these two equal to each other now. So I've got B, I, told you I'll try and keep it colour coordinated, and L. And they equal mass times gravity because we're equating them to each other now. They both equal force. So now I can say this force equals that force. So I can equate them to each other. So I've got mass times by your gravity okay now looking at this if this this is trying to show that there is a cause of movement so if we can we can demonstrate this because the top pan balance will show a force okay okay so you know that force downwards is equivalent to bil but we also uh, know that force can act downwards due to mass times gravity. Now, if I've got that wire and it is clamped in place, it can't move due to a force caused by the magnetic field. So what happens instead, if you've got it sat on top of that top pan balance, that if it's clamped in place, provided that your current and your magnetic field are going in the right directions, as I proved earlier, um, if that wire is trying to go up, then and it can't move, then what the system tries and does is that magnet there acts downwards to compensate for that. So, you know, overall, if I was looking at that system, it would still appear that the wire is moving upwards. However, that top, that, that magnet is pushing down on the top pan balance. So it appears on that top pan balance that there's a force acting on it, despite the fact that no one's pushing on it. It's the field causing the wires to try and move up, forcing the magnet to go down. Now, I can equate these two equations to each other in the sense here. So BIL equals my mass times my gravity. Um, now this is a really really key skill to have during your exam because not only does it show that you can kind of derive equations or merge them but it shows during your required practical you actually understand what's going on and what you're trying to prove so don't forget this rule it's it's kind of like a golden rule when we're doing about um, equating fields and forces to each other so this is kind of a really really big one to remember so don't forget it Okay, so essentially what we've done is we've ticked off all of this, fine and dandy. You know how to use the left hand rule, you know that thumb is movement caused by force, first finger is field, second finger is current. You can use them in a scenario like this, you know what each of them stand for and what units you can measure it in and you've also had a quick razz over what the required practical is and how to use that equation in a sense where... You equate weight to the force due to the field on a wire. 
So I'm going to go and have a cup of tea. Have a good evening. Goodbye.